This is episode 108 of Hebrews in Exile with our honorable teacher, Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And we're going to take some time to reiterate a concept that we introduced in a previous podcast about the melanation of individuals in the Masoretic text. Oftentimes, we are not taught or even shown how the individuals shown in what you may call the Old Testament are actually people of color. And that makes a big difference on your outlook and how you see and perceive the things that are germane to the text. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Hebrews in exile, you know what we do. Let's go! Make everything right. Give me more power. Give me more love, yeah. Give me more passion. This is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton, and this is Hebrews in in Exile. Exile. All right, Sean. Yes, sir. I always start out by saying, Sean. Yes, Ambassador. (laughs) I am so glad Mm. that the Most High of Hebrew Israel is allowing certain things to come to the fore Mm. whereby we are able to address the issues. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've heard me say before in our podcast that we have had prior that there are different factions of so-called Hebrew Israelites. Yes. And we have placed ourselves at the fore of declaring ourselves Mm. to be purists. Absolutely. Purists. Yes. Very organic. Purists. Mm -hmm. We deal with scripture Mm-hmm. From a hermeneutic, hermeneutical perspective, hermeneutics, mm-hmm. that is, to be able to explain scripture texts mm-hmm. by understanding the pretext yes. and the post text. Right. Everything is contextual and, and within its, when its proper place. Its exegesis is very um, easy for us to expound upon. We don't spiritualize the text. Sure. We deal with texts in the matter of saying, what did the Most High of Israel say? What did he say? And we don't mix thought with what he said. He's our El. Correct. Correct. Now, within the fiber of things that are Hebrew, we have to go back into scripture text and we have to go over to Bereshit, I believe it is. Okay. Where Lot got in trouble. Yes, he did. And they sent a messenger in Bereshit. I forget what chapter it's in, and I need it right now. Oh boy. I'm... For this right here, I, I need it. I'll get it. I'll get it. It's, a, it's around, it's going to be around 12, 13, yeah, 14, where, somewhere in there. Where he says in text, go tell Avraham mm-hmm, the, the Hebrew. Hebrew. Yes. Father Avraham is defined as a Hebrew. All of the family, the 12 sons, the grandchildren, all of the proponents of Yisrael, mm-hmm. not Israel, Yisrael, there's mm-hmm. no I, it's a, it's a Y, a yes. Yod. Got it. It's a Yod. Okay. So in text, what, what text is that? That's in Bereshit or Genesis chapter 14. And it's probably good to start at 10, but where the specifics are is in verse 13, where it says, 
Uh, let me back up and get go up to. Let's go Reed. back. Reed. <laughs> I'm just messing now with you. I'm just messing with you. That's, that, that, that's not what we do. That's not what. That's not what we do. <laughs> what, what an appropriate uh, uh, mongo. Uh, uh, that's not, uh, the that's not what we do. Leaving me. <laughs> that's not what we do. But anyhow, would you read the text for me because I don't have it here on my on my tablet. So uh, Genesis 14 or Better Sheet 14, starting at verse 10, it says now. The Siddim Valley, and I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible, uh, was full of clay pits. And when the kings of Sodom and Amara fled, some fell into them, while the rest fled to the hills. This is 11. It says the victors took all the possessions of Sodom and Amara and all their food supply. Then they left. 12. But as they left, they took Lot. Avram's brother's son and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. Here you go. Here's your part. Someone who had escaped came to Avram, the Hebrew, Hebrew. who was living by the Oaks of Memory, the Imori, okay. brother of Eshkelon, okay. brother of okay. so on and so forth. So, so text establishes that, first of all, Israel is not the ethnicity of what is modernly today known as the Oxenazi Jews. Mm -hmm. Abraham was a Hebrew. Correct. Every ethnicity has a language. Mm -hmm. The language of our father Abraham, who was a Hebrew, is Hebrew. Hebrew, correct. So when you hear anybody talking about the Hebrew language and being able to speak the Hebrew language mm -hmm. as we can, mm -hmm. uh, they assume that we're Jewish. Correct. Yeah, automatically, right off, right off the gate. But our ethnicity, because of the diaspora that took place, that scripture text speaks to in terms of Israel being diaspora out of the land into the four corners of the world, mm -hmm. we are in this exile. Correct. Yep. Straight. Now, yep. with that being the case, we have our dear brother here, um, Mike Ringer and Alan Parr, Attempting on YouTube to debunk us. Right. They're trying to debunk us. Mm -hmm. And Alan Parr is trying to explain Hebrew people and he himself. I'm listening to him and we're going to we're going to we're going to play him. He, we're we're going to we're going to play him tonight. Sure. Is trying to debunk Hebrew Israelites. Mm. Mm. You can't talk about a family that you have no really? relationship with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's this. You you have this. You yeah. You you can't talk about Hebrews. And in a in a way that that places them within a norm, right? That you're establishing for them to be right. You're 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 what the proverbial term for that would be. You're pigeonholing a particular group of people. I can't go and talk about the nation of Islam or I can't talk about anybody else that's other religions out there. I don't know anything, I don't know anything about, about them. them. All, I, no. all I know is about the propaganda that has been spread through the media about them, whether that be good, bad, or indifferent, without having a good understanding of what the doctrine is. And therefore, that kind of brings us to where we are because there's a lot of misinformation. And I like to use that word a lot because it's 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 used in political uh, uh, uh terms, well, for lack of eloquence, but there's a lot of misinformation about us. It needs to be clarified. Well, in this podcast this evening, mm -hmm. we are going to respond to 
Mr. Alan Parr's comments about Hebrew Israelites no. in the diaspora. Absolutely. That's good. Let's do it. In order for me to do that, though, I got to set, I've got to set, I've got to set a foundation. And I've started setting that foundation by establishing that Father Abraham mm -hmm. is a Hebrew from Tex. Correct. Now, scripture, which is our scripture, we don't call it Genesis. We call it Bereshit. Mm -hmm. To Second Chronicles is the compilation of the Hebrew scriptures. It embodies the the Torah. Mm -hmm. It embodies the Ketuvim. Yes. And it embodies the uh, the Nevi'im, the Nevi'im, yeah, which are which are the prophets and the writings, correct, and the Torah, correct. We believe, we believe in that body of work mm -hmm. as being divinely inspired <laughs> yes. by the. Creator of all things. Mm -hmm. I call him the opulent, absolute, all existent one. Mm -hmm. I refer to him as El and Elohim because if we look at the um, historical origin of that particular, of the word God, mm -hmm. It's going to take us somewhere that's going to connect us into terminology and and things that are germane to that which is heathen. Yes. Yeah. I don't have time to deal with that tonight. That's that's for another <laughs> another subject. Mm -hmm. I'm just setting the table for the conversation mm -hmm. because I'm not going to talk in heathenistic language about the Creator of all things who has created the heavens. The Shema'in, correct, and the Eretz, the right. earth, mm -hmm. and all that's in it, mm -hmm. and it has declared in the book of Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter forty-four, that he's the first, he's the last, and beside him there, there is, is no, no other L. Correct. I'm setting the table. That's in our text, right? And it's interesting to me that Christians want to go into our text and cherry pick and pick things out mm -hmm. to fit their particular narrative. Mm. Now, very interesting. I, 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 yeah. So I, I got to <laughs> set this table and make this table pure and clean. So we know what we're talking about and where we're going. Yeah. We're purists. We believe, I'm going to tell you what we believe. Mm -hmm. We believe that L created the heavens and the earth and all things therein. Mm -hmm. We believe that that L created man. Yes. And we believe that in the book of Numbers, L said, I am not a human that I should lie, should lie. or change my mm -hmm. mind. Yep. Okay. So, we believe in the opulent spirit that has created all things. What we don't subscribe to, mm -hmm. we don't subscribe to any thing or any mm -hmm. body of person in flesh being L. Correct. Correct. He said, I'm not a man. Correct. And if he said he's not a man, then he said, I'm not a man. I'm not ever going to be a man. That's correct. I'm a spirit. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Now, so we're purists in, 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 that, in, that, in that realm. We don't take scripture out of context. We don't spiritualize it. The question we're always going to ask mm -hmm. is what did the Most, Most High L say? That's what we're going to ask. Yep. So let's get to it. Yeah. Let, let us let us reason together. We got Mike Winger and Alan Parr okay. here. And I'm going to hit 
Israelite will translate the word Egypt as bondage. They won't say this refers to the actual place of Egypt on the map. They'll say it really represents bondage. So let's read it from their perspective. The Lord shall bring African people into bondage to America with ships. That's how we got there. Let's read the text. Okay. <laughs> oh, what happened here? No, that was just the intro. So he's going to say that again. That was just kind of the okay. the, the opener to to get your well. Wish, let's, whistle. Well, let's let's run it. Let's let's, let's roll. Okay. Bible thinker. The Hebrew Israelites. Now, um, you may have heard, heard of them as the Black Hebrew Israelites, but just so you know that they that's the derogatory term. They they don't they don't associate with the Black Hebrew. It's Hebrew Israelites because they don't they don't believe that it has to do with their ethnicity or the color of their skin or anything like that. So. Um, First of all, I don't know what <laughs> this gentleman is making reference to. He's more than likely talking about the purple and gold Israelites. Mm -hmm. But it is a well-known fact, scientific fact, it is a scriptorial fact. Yes. That when the Most High created man, he created man from dirt. Mm -hmm. Dirt has a melanation to it. Sure it does. It's melanated. Mm -hmm. It is a known fact amongst many scholars and writers that the man that was created by the Most High and the majority of all the people that are spoken about in Hebrew texts are melanated people. Correct. Father Abraham is melanated. Correct. The 12 sons of Israel are melanated. Yeah. Mashe is melanated. Yeah. Uh, Zipporah, his wife, is melanated. Yeah. She's an Ethiopian uh, woman. She's an Ethiopian. Yep. Um, uh, can matter, we go on? Matter of fact, if you look at individuals' names and the meanings of their names, uh, Pincus means dark-skinned. So there's a lot of precursors, starting with the color of dirt, starting with the names of people. As you go on and, and, and you traverse through the text, you will see that this is a melanated group. Again, geographically, where are these people positioned? They're positioned in the north coast, northeast coast of Africa. That is a melanated part of the world. So there is no indication in text that we are talking about anybody else other than a melanated group. So you and I, recognizing that we are part of the diaspora, sure. being in this America mm -hmm. for over uh, 400 years, we recognize that the four corners of the earth are holding a very vast amount of Hebrew Israelites who were diaspored out of the land into the four corners as scripture text has said. Right. <laughs> And there's something that needs to be made a distinction here when we talk about being dispersed out of the land. When we talk about at the end of, of, of Debarim, which is Deuteronomy, we're seeing Moshe getting them to the front door. Yahashua in the book takes them into the land. They fall out of compliance with the Most High, and that is where the dispersion starts. It starts from the land. It doesn't start from Africa. You have to understand where the land actually is, and the text gives you a clear indication that it is from the body of Egypt all the way to the Euphrates. It's in the Middle, it's in the middle East area. So actually, the dispersion starts in the land of Eretz Israel, which is in the Middle East, and it goes to the four corners of the world. So there again, it's not systemic. And I want to be clear with this. It's not systemic to the transatlantic slave trade. That's just one of them. You have also uh, Hebrews being dispersed through the Indian slave trade. Right. So there's, when it talks about four corners, you got to consider every everywhere we've been dispersed out of the land. And it starts, its antithesis starts 
in the land, not in Africa. Yeah, and, and the transatlantic slave trade, uh, the majority of the people that were uh, uh, brought from that place landed in Brazil. There's a larger... Uh, yeah, South com- America, yeah. There's, there's a larger uh, group of people that are in Brazil than there are in the United States as a result of that. Correct. So I, I want us to be clear and understanding that as a pure Hebrew... We connect with our melanation, mm-hmm. and we connect with our ancestors. I'm not going to talk about Father Abraham and Mashe and the twelve sons as though they're not part of. I'm not part of their family. Correct. I am. I am just as much a part of them as as they are of me, by virtue of the fact that I'm here not supposed to be here, but I'm here because Mm -hmm. our ancestors disobeyed the rules and the instructions of the teachings of the Most High and that they abdicated the Most High to follow other gods. That's correct. That's called idolatry. Yep. So I want to be clear in understanding because he's going to talk about different factions. We're purists. Mm-hmm. We're purists. Okay. Now, let's get to something here. Let me hear him say something I'm, here. I'm going I'm to try my best to kind of shorten this one uh, because there's a lot of stuff that we want to talk about as it relates to this. And the first thing, guys, that I'm going to say about the Hebrew Israelites is that they're not monolithic. All right? They're not monolithic, which basically means that with each group that you meet, there's variances. There's all sorts of different groups that you're going to meet, camps of people that you're going to meet. And I'm going to give you a few of them here. So just know that when you're talking to somebody who is a Hebrew Israelite, and I'm going to say this later when I talk about the tips on how to really reach them, the first thing that you had better figure out before you make an assumption about what this person's view is or their beliefs is what camp are they coming from and what sect of Hebrew Israelites are they coming from? So uh, let me just give you a few different uh, groups in terms of what they believe about divine authority. Now, he talks about these different groups in different camps. I've just told you, and I agree. Yes. I agree that there are different factions of of individuals in this diaspora that refer to them as Hebrew Israelites. But the true test, Mm. the true test, see, you can't talk about groups of people unless you're going to understand what the test is that proves who you are. Right. The true test of a, of a pure Hebrew is that he, he, lives his life according to the rules and the regulations that the Most High has established and set down. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to go back and talk about this this piece of text that he opened up with, and let me read it in in Devarim before I go there. Sure. He says, he says, they, these Hebrews speak of it in the way he presented it. But let me, let me read it to you. Mm-hmm. Finally, Yahweh will bring you back in ships to Egypt, the place of which I said to you, you will never, ever see it again. And there you will try to sell yourselves as slaves to your enemies, but no one will buy you. Mm-hmm. That's what the text says. Yes. Now, verbatim. Verbatim. I don't have a problem with the text. I have a problem with the way he's read it. I have a problem the way certain Hebrews express it, keep it in textual language. Yep, exactly. And if we were going to, if we were going to validate it in its pureness, we take it back to the Masoretic text mm-hmm. from which Stern's Bible, uh, which we read from, mm-hmm. is as close a of a document to the Masoretic or the Mazora mm-hmm. as as possible. Exactly. Exactly. Now, talking about divine authority, 
anybody, anybody bleeding blood who has any association in their heart, mind, or spirit in relationship to the Most High or teaches anything that the Most High has said does not abstain from a divine authority. Mm. Mm. What divine authority? Let's mm. be clear we understand what divine authority. Mm. The only divine authority that pure Hebrews subscribe to is the authority of the one who has created all things. Yeah. Outside of that, yeah. there is no divine authority. Yeah. And actually, let me add this. As oh, well. let me hit it while go I'm there. Yeah, go. Finish your point, please. Let me hit it. Your Jesus Christ has no doggone divine authority <laughs> because he has not been chosen by the Most High. As Torah text says, mm -hmm. I will choose for you your king. Yeah. 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 I, now, I, 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 I shouldn't have gone there. <laughs> but, but. This kind of, this kind of, somebody trying to talk about my family who doesn't know my family, it upsets me. Sure, sure. And sure. I'm trying not to be upset. I need, I need to slow my roll. I mean, I, when he's talking about us being a, a, we're not a monolith, and, and again, piggybacking on what you're saying, we need to define what purists are. Because in the one sense, it is a monolith. If you're talking about being true Hebrews, that is a monolith. But when you want to be use this pejorative term to kind of pigeonhole everybody who claims to be a Hebrew Israelite, then yes, Brother Parr is correct. But I would also want to bring to everyone's attention that I believe the two gentlemen that are speaking are Christian. And Christianity is not a monolith either. You have Catholics, Episcopalians, Baptists. PAWs, you Kojic. have Kojics, you have all kinds of sects of Christianity. Yes. So I don't know if what Brother Paul is saying is saying, I'm just pointing, making a point, but, and that's, I think that's what he's doing is making a statement. But again, I, I need to call into subjection. You know, if we're going to make a statement about one, just be sure that, you know, we're, the platform that you're coming from yes, too exactly, is the same one. Exactly, exactly. And the interesting thing that you've indicated is that the root, the root of Christianity is the church. And when you use the word the church, the church is, is Catholicism. Sure. So all of the factions and all the branches that branch off of that, off mm -hmm. of that, whatever they call themselves, mm -hmm. their father is Catholicism. Yeah. And the origin of their daddy is Constantine. Yep. Nicene Council 325. Come on. Read. Come on, people. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come. You, 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 you can talk to us. You, you can talk to us. Okay. All right. Now, this is really, this group is really, really, uh, they're, they're hard to pin down uh, because there's so many different beliefs. But first and foremost. No. You can pin us down. <laughs> you can pin us down. You can pin us down because we don't have a majority of beliefs. Right. We have one, one belief. That's right. And it's written in Devarim chapter six, mm -hmm. where it says, Shema Yisrael, Israel. Yahweh Wait. Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Echad. Yahweh is one. Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with, with all, all your heart, all your soul, and all of your resources. That's where we stand. We stand on the top of our ancestors. We stand on scripture. scripture. Yes. Because across the street in the Greek text, Shaul says that all scripture is Yah breathed, mm -hmm. valuable for teaching the truth and Correction in right living. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, all right, you can na you can nail me down on that one because I'm going to hold everybody who opens their mouth. I'm going to hold your foot 
to scripture. Absolutely. And that's what we do. And we continue to do that as we transverse through our podcast, because we hold our own accountable as much as we like to speak about other other things that we've come to come out of. We still hold those who call themselves Hebrew Israelites. We hold their feet to the fire and we <laughs> and we measure them by the rod of the most high and the commandments. So we are as equally as critical of our own who decide that they want to call themselves Hebrew Israelites. And, and let me be clear. Let me be clear. Let me let me let me say, let me say something else straight, sure. because I understand and I hear uh this gentleman speaking, Brother uh, Parr, yeah, Brother Parr speaking from a perspective of what he has known, heard about the purple and gold people mm -hmm. that call themselves Hebrew Israelites. He's speaking from listen, 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 listen. We, Paris, have no disdain and have no hatred to any ethnic group of people none at all it Absolutely. violates it violates the principles of the most high and it violates torah which i'm going to talk about later because he's going to bring it up and i'm going to have to explain to him what torah yes. is our our voice from the most high has told us in text how we are supposed to treat the foreigner and mm -hmm. it's not with disdain correct because he tells us again remember you were once a, a foreigner, foreigner in in egypt in misraim egypt. and you were a slave in egypt mm -hmm. remember that so when it comes to foreigners, I'm telling you that you need to know how to treat them and you don't treat them badly. Correct. We have no hatred toward any group of people. The reason why we have no hatred towards any group of, treat of people, not only because of the mitzvot that the Most High has given us, mm -hmm. but also we have our ancestor, Yosef who went into Mitzrayim, whose daddy made him a robe of many colors, which was prophetic to what Hebrew Israel is supposed to look like. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Excellent point. Okay, let's move on. All right. You have the groups that are the Torah only. So you're going to have some groups out there where the only five books of the Bible that they uh, believe is divine truth is just the Torah. That's it. Yeah. Mm, now I gotta stop. Yeah, we gotta address that. I gotta address that. Yeah, you want to address it? Shall I address it? No, you start because I know you hot to trot right now. <laughs> well, you maybe said, you, no, because you, you said you were going to address it. Yeah. Okay. So that's your listen. Listen. The Torah and the interesting thing about the Torah is that there are not many people, um, and particularly Hebrew Israelites from whatever faction they are know what the Torah is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Torah is not the first five books of the Bible. Correct. And I, I and and you know what? I don't even want to use the word Bible. I, I, I that's because five books Bible, of the come, text, Bible, yeah. come, Bible comes from the Greek word biblica and it's associated with Greeks and I'm Hebrew, so I don't even want to use, use that yeah, use okay. that word. Okay. Agreed. So Within the first five books of Scripture is the compilation, the compilation of Torah. Mm. Torah is the is mentioned in Devarim chapter four. Let me read it for you. We're going to read four verse one. Okay, and this is this is our teacher. Mashe, mm -hmm. Mashe. We call him Mashe, not Moses. Mashe, Mashe speaks in in Devarim chapter four, and beginning at verse one, he says, "Now, Israel, listen to the laws and rulings I am teaching you, in order to follow them, so that you will live." Put a pen in it. There's a period there. Right. So Torah is are laws and rules mm -hmm. that the Most High has established for Hebrew Israel to live by. 
Yes. It is our constitution. Yes. Yes. It is our constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, he goes down to verse 5. He says, and he, oh, and, and he goes on, he says, verse 2, he says, In order to obey the mitzvot of Yahweh your Elohim, which I am giving you, do not add to what I am saying, and do not subtract, subtract from, from it. it. So, in the <laughs> compilation of the five books that are there that are spoken by the Most High, the Most High says, do not add to what I'm saying and do not subtract from it. Sure. We're purists. Mm -hmm. We don't add to what the Most High said. We don't subtract from it. Mm -hmm. And we don't think that we're smarter by the, than the Most High by going over to Hebrews chapter 7 and saying that what the Most High said didn't bring us to the goal. So we're going to do something different. Because what you're telling me in Hebrews 7, you're telling me that the Most High is not efficient enough <laughs> to give his people the means by which to fulfill whatever he's promised to them. That's because wow. y'all don't know our L. Mm. And it upsets me to even read that text over you, over there, to hear what is said over in Hebrews chapter 7, to even imply that the Most High is inefficient. <laughs> is inefficient. <laughs> And we're going to take it upon ourselves to complete it and change it to make it fit how we think it should go. Now, so now that's now. No, now no, so, gotta... so, so now he says in verse five, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five. Look, I have taught you laws and rulings just as Yahweh, my Elohim, ordered me so that you can behave accordingly in the land where you are going in order to take possession of. Therefore, observe them, follow them, for, for them all, for then all peoples will see you as having wisdom and understanding. When they hear of all these laws, they will say, they will say mm. this great nation is it's surely, surely wise. a wise and understanding people. That's the reason why we talk about Yahweh's exiled empire. empire. Yep. Because these laws and rulings are our constitution. It is our way of life. life. So if you're going to say that we're Torah only, you need to know what Torah is. Now, with that being said, you have to go over to over to the helium Psalms chapter 119. What in the world is the king talking about in that whole dissertation mm. of Psalms 119? He talks about Yahweh, teach me your oh. precepts, your statutes. Your teach me your ways. Mm -hmm. Teach me your laws. Mm -hmm. Oh, then that must mean that there are some literal statutes, laws, things that are there that I need to know. Exactly. Now, if the king knew it, and you go to Chronicles, and you will you know just no, just go to just <laughs> just <laughs> just just go to the Book of Kings, where the Most High calls King David his anointed Moshiach forever, and it's solidified in Second Chronicles, sure, where he calls the king his anointed Moshiach forever. Correct. So if the anointed Mashiach forever, whom the Most High has spoken highly of, mm -hmm. is talking about in Psalms 119, mm -hmm. laws and rulings mm -hmm. and teachings and mitzvot and commandments, mm -hmm. we're purists. The purists. So to, to, to answer Brother Parr's question or assertion, Number one on his list doesn't pertain to us. No, it doesn't. Because, because again, to understand what Torah is, you got to understand that the better way to maybe the way I understood it and the way you made it plain to me was that 
Don't look at the first five books and call it Torah. Call it what it is. Those are the narration of by Moshe, the first five books of Moshe. Who is the GOAT? And then what we have is that we believe in the prophets and we also believe in the writings, which would be for people, you might call it the Old Testament, but we call it the Masoretic text. Inside the first five books is the Torah. The Torah are the commandments and rulings and statutes. So to make the assertion, to again, to, to provide clarity, number one doesn't fall, uh, we don't fall under that particular uh, classification because we obviously believe not only the Torah, which is the statutes, but we also believe in the first five books of Moshe and the writings and the uh, prophets, minor and major. And I'm going to add this in here too. There's some other things that we we also take a, take part in that a lot of Christianity will tell you to stay away from is which is the apocrypha. Now again, oh, hold up, wait 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 wait, that's coming up. That's, oh, that's coming, coming up. up. Okay, yeah, that's coming up. Don't, okay, don't all jump, right. Don't jump into it yet. Let's let's let him let's let, let him, him mention talk? it. Okay. Let's let him talk, okay. and then then we'll get to that. Okay, all right. And and in, and I was trying to look for the text in uh, Mal in, Mal in Malachi, where Malachi, the last prophet in your all's Greek inspired Bibles, says, "Remember the law of Mashe." Right. Our text says, "Remember the Torah of Mashe," which are the compilation mm -hmm. of rules, right? Uh, uh, laws, statutes, precepts, right? Mitzvot that Mashe has been given by the Most High to give to the nation of Hebrew Israel. Yep. That's it. First five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. And the rest of it you can throw out. The rest of it, is, there's no real value from it. Okay. Yeah, you got to stop it again because we don't call it the Pentateuch. And, and, <laughs> and that's not true. We don't, we don't throw out the rest of it. Yeah. We, we, we do, not, we do not throw out the writings <laughs> And the prophets. And the reason why we don't throw out the writings and the prophets is because the writings and the prophets come back and validate what the master teacher Mashe has given to Hebrew Israel mm -hmm. as their constitution and their way of life instructions. Yeah, so a, we can't throw it out. Yeah, it's a personification of what was written in prophecy. Exactly. That's all that is. That's all it is. So you can have those people that are in the Hebrew Israelite camp. And then you also have people who are going to subscribe to the whole Bible, but you're also adding on the Apocrypha. So you have the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the Apocrypha. All right? Okay, that ain't us either. Because <laughs> when you threw the New Testament in there, that kicked that one out too. Yeah, we, 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 we don't subscribe to the New Testament. Um, unlike, let me tell you something. Hmm. Truth will stand on its own on its own mm -hmm. you can't tear truth down you can attempt to mm -hmm. but it's always it's going to be like Marduk it's always going to spring it's, it's going to lay down and the most high is going to stand up again and say no this is true right right <gasps> I have a motto. Mm -hmm. My motto is truth matters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you all, since you are kind of castigating Hebrew people and what we believe, let me tell you what we believe. We believe that the scriptures that have been spoken by the Most High to Mashe and the prophets and the writings are inspired divinely by the Most High because mm -hmm. the Most High is a spirit and he has to have individuals that he can trust mm -hmm. to speak for him. Correct. And all of these men that are written in Scripture text are set apart individuals that the Most High trusted to speak for him. Mm -hmm. The text across the street, we call it across the street. The New Testament text is written by Greeks. Correct. And it's written by Romans. Mm -hmm. It's written by Eurocentrics. It does not have the fingerprint of one melanated Hebrew person mm. ordained 
ordained yeah stop the by word the, in there yep. ordained by the divine spirit of the most high to speak for him and it has more untruth in it than a than a than Swiss cheese yeah absolutely absolutely now you talk about they subscribe to the new t- New Testament, Old Testament with the Apophila, the Apophila. Well, let me ask you all a question. Um, who canonized the Bible? Catholic Church. Who decided what was divine and what was not divine? Catholic Church. Oh. Oh. Uh, are these people melanated people or are they Eurocentrics? They're not melanated. Not in the slightest. Mm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And I think it's I think it's important to understand also in that same vein is that all things when we, when when the text across the street New Testament talks about scripture and we need to, I, this wasn't said but I I, I got to make this point is that when it talks about scripture, it's talking about the Masoretic text. It's not talking about the New Testament. No, it's not. Any of those people that refer to it, and that's the reason why we have such a problem with the New Testament, because there's too many holes in there, there's too many contradictions in there, especially when glaring with what you brought up earlier, which is in Hebrews chapter 7, which totally negates the Torah, which is in total opposition of Matthew 5 and 17, when out of the mouth of your own demigod, Jesus, when he says, hey, you know what? I didn't come to abolish it, but I came to fulfill it, which means I came to show you that you can do it. It's not that hard. You can fulfill it. But at the same time, he's saying anybody that teaches against these will be least in the kingdom. And in some instances, if you teach against them, you won't even make it into the kingdom of heaven. Whatever that means for you guys on that side of the street, it's it's and you, you can't come over into Hebrews chapter seven and say, well, if Yeshua or Christ is saying you can do them. And then you come over here and say, we're going to uh, abdicate all of those in Hebrews chapter seven. It's a conflict that cannot be resolved. So the issue here is it's, it's interesting to me that brother Parr is making this assertion about the Apocrypha because the Apocrypha say, shares the same types of issues that the new Testament shares, which is, a lot of Christians don't ascribe to the Apocrypha because they're saying it's got too many holes in it. There's too many contradictions. In it. And that's the funny part about it is they say they measured the uh, the validity of it against a Masoretic text by saying, are the things that are in the Apocrypha measure up to the Masoretic text? The issue here is that one of the reasons they discount it is because it has Swiss cheese in it. And I just explained to you that the New Testament has, new, has Swiss cheese into it. So... When you have these two elements, we got to continue to to always bring to the forefront, you know, you can't be calling the, the, the pot, can't call the kettle black. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. They don't believe that their text is full of holes. Right. But, but if we, if we look at scripture that they have pulled... Now, 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 understand something. Understand something. It's, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. The New Testament can't stand on its own. It can't. It has to go over into the Hebraic text and pull out of the Hebraic text and set it and cut and paste it into their text and then make a statement mm-hmm. that if we use proper hermeneutics and exogenesis study and read texts, and pretext and post-text, what they posted in there does not even come close to what the Most High is saying or is established. That's that's right. that's holes. Yeah, that's holes. And it's and it's equally interesting that again we're making the assertion that in in some instances Christians are telling other people to stay away from the apocryphal books, but at the same time, and I'll make this point, the apocryphal books are actually referenced inside of the Masoretic text. When you get over into the book of Yahashua, the, the book of Yasher is, Yasser, refer- yes. is referenced in the same situation where the sun stood still in the sky 
for a whole entire day. You have in Chronicles where uh, the annals of King David are referenced. You have the book of wars that's in there. You also have things that are germane to the book of Jubilees, which is accredited to uh, the narration by Moshe the goat. So there's, there's, and the reason I call him the goat is the greatest of all time. So there's the apocryphal books need to be read in their context and evaluated against, against the Masoretic, the Masoretic text. text. Yes. That yes. should be your base. But yes. I, I would preface that if you are going to jump into the Apocrypha, that you have a good, strong understanding of the Masoretic text, because there's some things in there that might throw you off. But again, <laughs> the Apocalyptic books are not for a novice. They're not. You're right. They're not for a novice. And and what I'm well, I'm not going to say that. I think the basis of again of where we're at is that everything has to be germane and fold back on the Masoretic text. Even if you don't even get into the Apocrypha, if you don't get into the Book of Yasha, you don't get in the Book of Enoch. He's referenced in in Genesis chapter or Bereshit chapter five. Even if you don't get there, what are we commanded to do in Devarim chapter four? Obey. Teach, teach the, rules and regulations and and over a 151 times plus between Bereshit and Devarim, Genesis and Deuteronomy, the word obey surfaces over and over and over again. Who is asking us to obey? The Most High, El mm -hmm. Yahweh yes. is asking us. Let me. Before I just jump to the next to the next issue, okay. Let's let let me let me let me go back here. I want I want to go back to because we're talking about the Masoretic text. So let's go back to Exodus chapter. What is it? Thirteen, I think it is. I want. Is that what I want? Uh, I went there. Thirteen. What are we doing in Exodus? No, yeah. no, it's no, it's 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 uh, no, it's it's, it's got to be Shemot chapter three. Is it? Come what are you on. trying to find? Um, 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 because you know I got you. The language, e a a yes, a share ye a. Oh, uh, who's tell him who sent me? Who sent me? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's um, that's in that. You're right, and there you in a Shemot. I'm in Shemot chapter three. Uh, going. I, I, no, you're you're right. Chapter three, starting at thirteen. Thirteen. It said, and "Read." It says now, most, go ahead. Now, I said we're purists, right? Yes. Here's what you're not going to find in your Eurocentric scriptures. Agreed. King James is not going to have it. Um. I don't even remember what all what all of them are anymore. King that James, the, uh, and NIV, Tom, Thompson and... Chain's not going to have it. Yep. Um, the Hebrew, I mean the the um, any of your any of your New American Standard, any, any not, translations. Any, yeah. any they're not going to have this language. Okay. This language comes up out of the Masoretic text. I'm going to read it for you. Mm -hmm. And and what it is, it defines for us purists that the Most High has a name. Yes, and his name is not God. Correct. That's just a title. Now you're gonna. Yeah. Now, now, what, now, now, now. I, I hear. I already hear what you're gonna say. Oh, he has many names. No, he doesn't. He <laughs> has many titles. Correct. He has one, one name. name. Yeah. Chapter three, Exodus, Shemot thirteen. Moshe, Moshe said to El, "Look." When I appear before the people of Israel and say to them, the Elohim of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? El said to Moshe, Ea, Asher, Ea, I am, will be, will be what I am, will be. And added, here is what you say to the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Ea, I am, or I will be, has sent me to you. The El uh, said further to Moshe, say to this people of Israel, yod Hey vav Hey, the El of your fathers, the El of Abraham, the El of Yitzchak, the El of Yaakov, has sent me you, this is my name forever. This is how I am to be remembered generation after generation. Now, what's missing in those in those Bibles that I just talked about. 
What's missing is say this to the people of Israel. Yod He Vav He. Yod He Vav He is the tetragrammaton which defines the name of the Most High. Sure. Which I will say to you, many of us Hebrew people pronounce it differently. Correct. Correct. With the vowel points, which you don't know anything about, uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll pronounce it Yahweh. Mm -hmm. uh, without the vowel points, it's Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. uh, and some will even pronounce it Yahqua. Yahqua, yeah. The point being is that the Most High has a name. It's not God and it's not Lord. Those are titles. Mm -hmm. England has lords. Scotland has lords, but the Most High don't have no lords. That's correct. That's correct. He is L. He is the might. When you when when I talk about L, I am talking about the mighty one. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the one who has created all things, mm -hmm. who spoke to Moshe and told Moshe, "Tell Hebrew Israel, this shall be my." name by which I am to be remembered. Yes. Yes. It, it, listen, Woo! every it's, you got to ask yourself the question. One of the, one of these days, how come when I read the text, every, even pagan gods have names, e, uh, Balaam, uh, Ashtaros, when you, Dagon, all these names are there are deep for, even when you get into the apocryphal books, all of them have names. Allah has a name in Islam. They have names for for their for their deity. But when it comes to, and I don't want a Christian bash, but you just have to ask yourself the question: Why do you keep calling him God? Doesn't your God have a name? Well, that's because everywhere in their text. Now listen, what text is the oldest text? Is the Masoretic text or what? they call the Old Testament? Is the Old Testament older than the New Testament? Yes, it is. And the next question is, who defined it as being old? old? Right. It only becomes old when you establish something else to replace it. Who defined it as being old? Did the Most High say it was old? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. No, he did not. Okay. Nor all did the Most right, High right, say, right. "Oh, on this particular day, we're going to upgrade to something else." Now, <laughs> so so now we get to this. We get to this point. So we we let's let's, let's go to the next. We exasperated that. Yeah. <laughs> ne next talking point. <laughs> okay. Right. So that's another camp of people. So you already can see why it's important for you first and foremost to figure out who am I talking to and which camp are they in, because if you just assume that, okay, this person only believes in the Torah, you're going to get into some deep waters where they're going to say, no, no, what are you talking about? You're misrepresenting me. We believe in the whole Bible, right? So you got to make sure you know where you're coming from. Now, let me tell you what camp we're in. I'm going to tell you what camp we're in. We're in the same camp that... <laughs> Siri trying to answer the question too. <laughs> Siri, 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 Siri want to jump in here. <laughs> Siri trying to get a piece of this action. She's like, no, 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 I got to get in this. We are in the same camp that left Mitzrayim under the leadership of the greatest prophet that the Most High said there ever was, and that's Mashe. Yes. That's the camp that we're in. Mm hmm. That camp has gone through a lot of a lot of things that are germane to their inability to follow mm -hmm. the ways of the Most High, which in Lamentations chapter five, verse seven, I paraphrase, it says, we are in this exile because of our ancestors mm -hmm. who would not obey yeah. the rules and regulations and yeah. regulations of the most high and went following other else. Yes. Okay. So that's the camp. I, I'm, I'm, I want, so if you happen to call us, uh, you already know what camp we're in. 
we're in the camp of scripture. Yes. That's the camp we're in. Yeah. We're in our, our leader, our lead. We, we, we have, we have two leaders. We have two leaders in our camp. We have Mashe, who is the one who is set forth by the voice of the Most High and the inspiration of the Most High, mm -hmm. rules, regulations, which promulgates our constitution and our way of life for this wonderful, opulent nation that belongs to the Most High Correct. and his people. Correct. We're in that camp. Mm -hmm. So the Most High is the sovereign sovereign overseer. Mashe is the teacher and according to Chronicles, King David will be our Moshiach king forever. Mm -hmm. And let me throw this in. Let me throw this in right early. Our camp is going back to land. Correct. Y'all's camp <laughs> is going to heaven. Right. <laughs> right. That's nowhere in the Hebrew text. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the Hebrew text does the Most High talk about anybody going to heaven. His conversation over and over and over again is, I promise Father Abraham that I was going to bring you back from the four corners of the earth to land. That's right. Moving right along. And then the third thing is, uh, some of them believe in the Bible, right? Now, once again, how they interpret the Bible, as we're going to see in just a moment. Yeah, you, met, you mentioned the bit with the Biblica and all that earlier. <laughs> our camp, yep. our pureness, we don't believe in the Bible. Mm. The Bible, the word Bible, comes from the Greek word Biblica. Mm -hmm. We believe in the scriptures. Correct. The ordained scriptures that are that make up the Masoretic text that roll up out of the Hebrew language itself, translated, translated, transliterated into a language that we can read it from a English perspective. But if we need to, yes, if we need to, we can go back to the Hebrew itself, read it translate it and transliterate it for ourselves. Absolutely. That's what we can do. Absolutely. And I don't need to prove that to you. <laughs> Just take it for granted that you ought to you ought to know by how we're talking that we are not novices. Correct. Correct. And I'm going to come back again and I'm going to say these words again earlier. We have no disdain mm. for any ethnic group of people. Mm. If nations want to join with us as Ruth and Naomi did in that constitution of language, mm -hmm. we accept them, but they have to accept our Elohim and they have to accept our way of life that has been given to us by the one who created us and called us in Shemot chapter four, uh, ch chapter four, verse 20. Somewhere, no, yeah. Uh, uh, Shemot chapter 4 verse 20 uh, 20 through 22 that says that Hebrew Israel or Israel is my first, first born, born son. son so there we are it is very different oftentimes than how we would interpret it but some will, will say okay no we are of the camp where we're Hebrew Christians and we believe in the entire Stop. Bible no. now I got to address that one right there because really he summed that up right there. That's a point that I've, we both made, which is to say that anybody that's prescribing to anything that's outside of the Masoretic text, you're just a version of Christianity. That's what you are. That's what you're just explaining right there. You've, 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 You've literally said, I want to, which there's a mitzvot about that. It's an analogy that's in there. It's like, you shall not mix. Okay? So, this is what we're getting back to, is that this is purely an issue where bullet points, number one, would be maybe the closest thing that we are, but two and three, that's just another form of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. That's what you're explaining. And that's yeah. how we look at our yes. brothers and sisters who are out there, maybe on the street corner that are still preaching that gospel of Christ. You're just another faction of Christianity. That's all. <laughs> 
you know, probably unbeknownst to the brethren there, there are a group of people that are called the Lamba tribe. Yeah, in Africa, yeah. In the continent of Africa. The Lamba tribe have had their DNA traced and their DNA is closely identified with the Aharonic priesthood. They have never, ever, ever, ever abdicated the laws, the rules, and the teachings of the Most High. They never have. Mm -hmm. They're purists. Mm -hmm. They are the same thing that we are. We are them and they are us. Mm. That's what we are. They don't they don't subscribe to any any New Testament theology authored by Greek writers and Constantine's Eusebius, uh, who has a problem with yeah. a lot of things and um, so forth and so on. So, I mean, we just need to make we need to make this clear yes. as we move forward. Apocrypha, same Bible that you believe. Okay, so that's another camp. And the fourth camp, and this is the one I want to talk about for just a moment, is Old Testament and New Testament, but no Paul. No, no Paul's letters, right? We don't, we don't believe in Paul's letters. And you have to understand the, the ideology behind this, and we're, we're going to get into this in just a second. But the idea is this. Many, many Hebrew Israelites in this camp will deny the divine authority of Paul's letters because they believe that white slave owners would utilize certain passages in Paul's letters Oof. as, uh, I guess, as a proof text or um, establishing the right to enslave or to, uh, to enslave people, right? To enslave Africans, right? So whenever the transatlantic uh, slave trade, which we're going to get into in just a moment. And so they believe that, hey, Paul teaches that, you know, slaves should obey their masters and this and that and the other. So we don't believe that Paul was inspired by God. So you have that camp, all right? You have that camp as well. Now, I, I, I got I, I to talk about Shaul. Paul in the Hebrew tongue. Yeah. I said we're purists, right? Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say Paul in the Hebrew tongue. It's Shaul in the Hebrew tongue. Shaul in the Hebrew in the Hebrew, Hebrew tongue. tongue, and Paul in in English. Let me tell you something about the writings of Shaul in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And my dear brother, you you need to go do your research. When Constantine had the Greek texts written by his band of chosen ones, all Eurocentric. There's a gentleman whose name is Eusebius. Historians write that Eusebius did not like a lot of the things that Shaul espoused in his letters. Mm. You have to know that over 4,000, 400,000 writings of the Hebrew writers of that period of time, the Greeks destroyed their writings. But Eusebius was a proponent of one who did not like the writings of Shaul. Therefore, mm -hmm. the writings of Shaul are tainted and slanted toward the belief system that Constantine and Eusebius wanted to establish. So, don't talk to me about Shaul. Shaul makes a, uh, makes a very valid point in Romans when he talks about the law or mm. Torah, he says, we're not under the law, we're under grace. But then he comes back in, the, in, a, in another verse and says, but the Torah or the law is spirit. 
Now, he understands that the law or the Torah has been divinely given by the Most High. Mm. So when he says we're not under the law, we're under grace, he's talking about we're not under the perversion mm. of the Torah by which the Pharisees and the Sadducees built this fence around what the Most High had said, because once again, they were trying to preserve the divinity of the Most High and protect it mm -hmm. from malicious use. But the Most does the Most High need anybody to protect him? No, <laughs> not at all. It's truth. It stands on its own merit. That's correct. And he said it's spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to go over to, to the helium because I know you all go back into our Hebrew scriptures often. Mm -hmm. Go read Psalms chapter 19 and get down in the lower, the lower spectrum of it and tell me what the Most High said about his laws and his rules and his instructions. We're going to get it for him? Yeah. All uh, right, uh, let's get it. All right. Let's get it. Let's get it. Psalms 19. Psalms 19. The helium. Because we, right. we, need, we need to establish this as being the, pres the precedent going on. In the helium, Psalms number 19, we're talking about the Torah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the precepts, the statutes, the ways, the mitzvot, the commandments that the Most High has spoken to mm -hmm. Hebrew Israel. He says these words, and your Greek Bibles are going to use the word law, and it's probably going to be in lowercase, which is an insult, because the Torah is divinely inspired and should always be capitalized, and law should always be capitalized, as in, we go to uh, W.E. Vine's uh, book of reference, his book of reference is going to, sh going to show you that the law and Torah are synonymous and the same. Mm. So, let's read. Okay. Psalms 19, verse 8. Okay. The Torah, or the law of Yahweh, is perfect, restoring the inner person, period. The instructions of Yahweh is sure, making wise the thoughtless. The thoughtless are the simpletons who believe any doggone thing. Dang. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, the precepts of Yahweh, and the word precepts is in your Greek text in Psalms 119. King David uses the word precepts. precepts. The precepts of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The mitzvah or the commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The rulings of Yahweh are true. They are righteous altogether, more desirable than gold, than much fine gold, also sweeter than honey or drippings from the honeycomb. Through them, your servant is warned. In obeying them, there is great, great reward. reward. Who's talking? Oh, my goodness. The king is talking. But the, the king whom the Most High said is his anointed forever. king forever? Mm. who has testified in Psalms, Most High, you know that I live my life according to your ways. Mm. What ways? What I just read right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're going to talk about Hebrew Israelites? Not. I said we're purists. Our camp, we're in, we're in the camp. I'm in the camp with King David. Yes, I, I'm 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 in the I'm in the I'm in the camp with I'm in the camp with Jeremiah who I'm in the camp with Yeshayahu. I'm in the camp with 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 all of the prophets. Nahum, That's the camp Obadiah, I'm in. Amos, all and, I, of them. and I'm not adding commentary to this. Correct. Correct. And you know what? I'm going to tell you what um, I. This sounds like to me, this is going to be a series because there's too many talking points in here. We have to address yeah. that that will take us because the clarity needs to be there 
in its purest form so you can have a reasonable understanding and answer. So when someone, not only if you are a purist, when you're presenting with these types of arguments, you know how to answer from a purist standpoint and be able to enrich someone else to say, this is what, and again, we're not arguing the point. We're just stating our position. That's what ambassadors do. If this, I'm going into another country, I'm going to state what we're about. I'm not here to argue the point. This is what it is. That's what it is. And if you are putting out misinformation about our nation, our empire, then we have to bring clarity for that, especially if you espouse to have not spent any time living in the country. Well, Ambassador <laughs> Appleton, are you suggesting that we <laughs> pause it here? I, yes, because actually I, there's going to be some... <sighs> there's a lot of stuff for us to unpack. And I think we need, we're doing that going at a great pace. <sighs> yeah. And you this know is what? Be a good series. And you know what? I need to step back <laughs> and I need to cool off <laughs> and I need to be more poised in my debunking this atrocious, this atrocity that's been put on the airways so that people who maybe understand, you know what? Um, as I, I, I got an analogy I want to use as, get as, as I close, to, mm-hmm. as I as as we come to a close of this particular podcast. Mm-hmm. I was reading in Apple News today, okay, uh, of the fact that the. Christian church are losing a number of their followers. Mm. That's that's a worldwide known mm. uh, aspect now. I read that in Apple News today. Mm. And they attribute it partially to COVID, but I don't I don't I I don't I attribute it to the fact that people are waking up absolutely to the misgivings that are there and have come to realize that something's missing. Correct. And there's a body of work out there mm-hmm. that they need to turn to. Mm-hmm. Tell me why it is that you find people turning to Islam and they're not just melanated people. They're, they're, there are non-melodated people that are turning, that are leaving Christianity and turning to Islam and and other religious ideas. It's because they become um, 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 oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they yeah. become disenchanted. Disenchanted. Yeah, I was thinking with the same word. What they've been hearing yeah. uh, all this time mm-hmm. in the faith that they thought was true right well um ezekiel provides for us the text that talks about the valley of dry bones Mm -hmm. the valley of dry bones is the hebrew nation of israel Mm -hmm. the bones are rattling and the most high the prophet asked the most high he says what shall I what shall I do about this? The most high said prophesy to the bones. Mm-hmm. Well prophecy is restating the words of the most high the way the most high has presented it and what the most high has said. And that's what we do each week as we sit before these mics, we present what the Most High has said. Mm -hmm. The Most High is my husband and And father. if I'm a good wife, then I don't have to listen to anybody but my husband. Mm. And the Most High is my covering. Absolutely. He's my shelter, Mm -hmm. my protector, my redeemer. According to 
Yeshayahu chapter 44, mm -hmm. he's my savior mm -hmm. in capital letters. Yeah. So I don't have to listen to anybody outside the scope of other than what the Most High says. Correct. And you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Sure. That if anybody comes and spreads disclaimers about what the Most High said, mm. that's called blaspheming. Mm. Be careful. Be careful how you come for us. Be careful what you say about us. Mm -hmm. Because we speak the words of the Most High. Yeah. And I'm going to step back and I'm going to say the same words that the Most High said to Samuel when Samuel was upset with Israel because they wanted a king. That's right. His words were, it. Samuel, it's not about you. you. It's me. Mm -hmm. The Most High said, it's me. So I'm just saying to anybody that's listening to this podcast and if these two gentlemen here uh, have words to say, be careful what you say because you can open your mouth in ignorance and blaspheme the set-apart spirit mm -hmm. of the Most High who has spoken these words that's called Torah mm -hmm. rules, instructions, mitzvot, precepts, and even your writer, Shaul, tells you that they are spirit. Yeah. This has been Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And this has been Hebrews... In, in exile. exile. Shalom. To, to be continued. Yes, we are going to finish this series. Stay tuned.